Hi, I'm Jennifer Branch. The blackberries are blooming in my yard and they're one of the prettiest flowers I've ever seen. Plus, they'll be blackberries soon. Here's a quick little sketch of blackberry flowers. Happy painting. I start out with the phthalo green and the azo yellow that I like for a nice pale background. It just glows behind the flowers and anything that you want luminous, which is really most things. I'm just letting my brush move around the painting and leaving lots of whites and I'm creating a nice dark negative painting for the white flower. I'm speeding up a little bit and dropping in some phthalo blue. This is where it starts to get really fun. Just let the colors drop in there. Don't, don't go scrubbing them. Don't just drop them in and trust. You have to work fast so everything's still wet, but just let it go. Thalo blue, don't put it anywhere that you don't want it permanently. Um, while you can soften edges, thalo blue is very staining. A little bit of burnt sienna makes a perfect strong dark. So I'm just moving around the painting with the same colors. Using a little bit of the Quin Red I'm going to use in the little pink flowers. Little pink um, buds. A little bit of ultramarine blue. Phthalo green and the Azo yellow again. And that's so much fun to just let drip in and it basically paints itself. Just let the paint go. Don't try to fuss with every little bit of it. Let it have some fun. Now this deep, dark, very juicy wash, I'm going to let dry completely before I even try to paint the flower. And notice how much um, duller the color is. It's duller and it's lighter after I've let it dry. So it don't be scared to put things on very, very dark, but not too thick. It will always dry lighter unless you put it on in a sludge consistency. I'm just going back and redefining a couple little areas here. And laying it bleed in, laying some of the burnt sienna bleed into the thalo blue. So everything merges together beautifully. Remember, all I want is a nice blurred background that's a dark foil for the light flower. Doing a basic dark surrounding light. The light needs to glow. Um, notice how the petals grow. Um, blackberries have ridges, kind of like roses, where everything radiates out from the center. There are some of them that look more like your basic cartoon leaf shape. Um, it just changes depending on the flower. And you want your brush strokes to move in the direction that the flower is growing in. It'll look a whole lot more if, like the flower, if every brush stroke follows the logical pattern that it's growing in. So that's one of the observe what you're painting. <laughs> I always think painting is a wonderful way to start observing life anyways. The world is beautiful and this way we get to appreciate it. Just a little touches on the flower that's kind of in the background. Little bits. I want just a hint. Little bits of pink and I'm really not going to add very much to those um, to the flower buds. It really is all about the bright white translucent flower. So little dashes of the yellow, and I'm just pulling paint in. 
just pulling paint from the background because that's what you see in a translucent petal. Um, you can see through it just like a sheet of white paper. So it makes sense that I would use a lot of the colors that are already in the background and I just pull some of the colors areas like shadows where I want to soften the edges. I don't want a really stark outline. Just pull the color that's already there. It'll give you a subtle version of the background. So you can pull paint a little bit up, but remember it's, it's going to be very important for me on a translucent flower to use um, transparent watercolors the entire flower. I don't want to use any gouache on any of the petals. I'm saving some gouache to use on the stamen because the stamens, they, they're very opaque. So painting them with the opaque gouache, perfect. But I want to make sure that I don't, even if the flowers don't have the edges exactly that I plan on or, you know, I have to blur a little bit, I don't want to be messing with gouache in my translucent flower petals. Just let them go. They're going to be the perfect foil to the bright stamens. A little bit of shadows underneath um, the center of the flower. I want that bright yellow to be contrasting with the deep bluey purples. That's going to make it really show up and um, be very three-dimensional. And after all, I am painting a three-dimensional object. So you have to have some shadows in there. Softening some edges. Just clean water and doing those little ridges that are part of the flower's growth. It's all radiating out. Half the time I don't even have paint on my brush. And when I do, it's very delicate. This is a white flower. I want it very delicate. Oh, it just feels better to paint that in, doesn't it? It starts looking like a really, it starts looking like a flower. A little bit more delicate on the top petals. I don't want quite so many shadows and things there. And see if it blurs a little when you didn't want it to. Blotting is easy. I did want it to blur a little. I just didn't want a big blob of phthalo green. So I've gone around and added that detail. And you see this, nothing's very sharp. It's not very clear. There's a, a couple lines that are clear. It's all very translucent, very much part of the background. So there's the areas lost and found edges. the flower just um, goes in and out of the background. And here I'm going to sharpen it a little bit. Remember, I have the shadow back there. A little bit more work on the leaves. It's just amazing how much blackberry leaves look like rose leaves. They even have the thorns. <laughs> These are wild blackberry bushes in my yard. They produce buckets of berries every year. It's funny how sometimes the plants that are neglected the most produce the most. Now I just want a tiny bit of detail and not as contrast 
not as much contrast on that flower. So a little bit more on that shadow there. That's a pretty important shadow because it kind of shows the shape of the petal. So I went a little deeper than most of the others. Now I've pulled out a little bit of paint from the top petal during that transition. Easy to do with a wet rag. I'm just blurring that edge and rounding that petal. Keeping it very simple. The entire painting took about an hour. It's always nice to know how long things actually take, especially when you're cutting them so it is an hour long YouTube video. I'm just doing some fussy little details here. You could skip it, you could do it. I personally think adding a little bit extra detail is worth it, but it's up to you. If you're doing a quick sketch somewhere, the last five minutes is, well, part of it is, is what you could, all you need is the bright white flower against the dark background. That's the essentials. The rest of it just adds depth. My favorite quinacridone gold. Okay, white gouache. I have let the painting below dry completely. I don't want the white gouache um, messing with the transparency of the flower below it. So I'm just flicking out with a rigger. And I take a little extra time doing something like this. It really is a critical part. It makes a big difference. This is what the, the delicacy of those little frothy stamens, that's what makes it. So I've got that. Now I'm adding the little ends. And it takes three rounds. A little bit of Quinn Gold here. And then I'll go back with the um, little bit of Azo Yellow so it has a little bit of depth. Because that little froth, that's what makes the delicacy of this gorgeous blackberry flower. It's worth taking a little time to add the details. I usually paint blackberry flowers in the spring just because they're so beautiful. And I hope this inspires you to paint your own. For step-by-step -step instructions and um, a reference photo, please visit my website at paintingwatercolor.com. This painting will be available for sale as well. Happy painting.